Hey all there virtual farmers and crafters, how's it going? Thanks for clicking and checking out this little guide on building tree houses and garden paws. Specifically utilizing that giant tree on the Florence map that has the skunks living at the bottom on story mode. Of all the trees on the island, it's the biggest of them all and so the most accommodating for a tree town. If I did a play-by-play -play of this design, the video would take a couple hours, so instead I'll just do the basics of how to get one started, then you add in your own creativity to finish the build. We're going to need some wooden platforms, pillars, and foundations, along with a lot of wooden stairs to connect the levels together. So when starting a treehouse, you might want a backpack full of those items, it's also helpful to bring along a workbench too if you're doing this in story mode. It'll save you some trips back to your main workstations. The original build was on a world save that later accidentally got overwritten. Unfortunately, I can't reload it up to show more footage, so I just uh, built a version 2.0 while waiting for the new hard drive to come in the mail. This time with a racetrack that winds down around the trunk, and some buildings wedged in between the track layers. But I'll be using the original build footage of the Tree Town's full shops to model the general idea of how one can use the varied workbench pieces in Garden Paws to make their own Tree Town foundations. You could, in theory, start wherever you want to on the tree. It wouldn't really matter where the original point is because you can just start hammering away from there until you filled in as much of the tree as you want. For this project, I started near the top at the point where the main trunk seems to branch out into some smaller limbs. If foundations or platforms don't initially light up for placement after you've hit the action key with it in your bars, the game probably just isn't finding anything to anchor to, especially if you're pretty high above the ground. Make your way back down to the ground, place a foundation or a platform, then grab onto your item shifter and hop a ride on the object all the way back up to where you want to place it. With at least one anchoring piece down, you can now snap others to it. It should be a lot easier from here placing down foundations to create a floor plan for your treehouse or possibly an entire tree town. Uh, mine started with the intention of doing only one house, but then I got bored and I had too many hours left over, so the house got turned into a spa with two overnight guest rooms and an extra patio that extended to a large branch, plus a cafe, flower shop, bookstore, place to buy some snazzy furniture, or a one-stop shop for pets in addition to clothing and a jewelry boutique. It's just basically become a luxury shopping center built into a tree so that I could use as many items from the Garden Paws asset catalog as possible. So if you are doing a multi-building endeavor on this project, once you have your initial foundation and perhaps a little structure built already, then we take in the wooden stairs and go nuts. If you're in creative mode, you can save yourself a ton of time and hassle by using the clone option. With your handy dandy item shifter equipped in the action bar, highlight it and select the piece in the spacebar menu that you want to copy and hit the T key. You'll see this tiny little poof in that location and you can now select that piece in the item shifter menu and move that and copy it around. This helps make stair building a bit faster. It does take about four to five pieces to span the height of one of the plaster walls, but in this case, you can extend them as far as you need to in order to reach where you'd like to go next in a set of homes or buildings. I just started winding down and around the tree, occasionally stopping to put in another landing. I didn't really have an exact plan when I started, but the layouts for the homes or shops came out looking like this to give you an idea of what you can do with the treehouse project. This way you've got a way to run all the way to the top of the treehouse and put in plenty of stops in between. This could be more hidden storage for tons of your gatherables. From here we can start building walls to complete small one and two story buildings that will fit between the branches and the bridges. You can make them into a theme, but even just some of the random shape houses would be adorable. Using the different paint brushes for texture change can go a long way to creating a unique tree town, but roof combinations can too. 
There's choices between using the corner ramps or a combination of the corner walls and wood ramps. Modern looks come out really well using the glass walls and doors in the mix. Once we finish the shelves of the buildings, we can get super decorative with the furniture sets, the planters full of colorful flowers, and other placeable objects to fill the interiors or decks of tree houses. Now, this is really fun, but it's the time-consuming part of any build. A huge craftable menu means there's so much we can do. Such a happy problem though, isn't it? The item shifter lets us move things in the most amazing ways too. If something doesn't look quite in place, equip the item shifter and hover it over the item, lock onto it using the spacebar menu or the control key. To the left, to the right. Now up, now down, now move it all around. I goof around with this way too much. Sometimes I even rely on it when the snap grid wants to place objects in strange alignments. It can be faster than dancing around trying to place the object by snap. My version 2 tree town was built with cart racers in mind. The main landing foundation is a garage and a clubhouse for starting the trip to the bottom. Cart derby style with tight left turns all the way down, across the finish line, and to the podium sitting above the water. Several bedroom huts sit above the clubhouse connected by decks and a bridge that includes its own outdoor spa area. Club Speed has plenty of storage and hangout space for the cart racers. Other structures around the trunk of the tree include a cafe above the main turns called Quick Tea, just a small 4x4 foundation hut with corner ramp roof style filled up with cooking related furniture and displays. On the opposite side of the tree is Petal Paws Flower Shop, another 4x4 foundation but this one with the uh, corner walls and the ramp style roof. Similar to the two bedroom huts above the clubhouse, but these tiny buildings still have enough space for tons of decor. I packed these uh, little flower and gift shops with all the cute stuff that I could find in the menu that would fit. The media room is down at the base of the tree for reporters to watch races. This shell was mostly built right into the tree, three foundations long with the corner wall and ramp roof construction that includes a wooden foundation to cover the entrance. Continuing down the trunk, there's a landing deck area with the finish line and podium area with extra space for spectators to relax in some of the Garden Paws lovely Heverly furniture. Perfect for a plush patio setting. It's got full infrastructure of ramps, so we can just run from the bottom to the top, but if you're in creative mode, you can always use the spiffy jetpack as a fast way to the top, or the magic carpet, because it's just another random but awesome addition to the game. And please, someday can we get this in story mode? The track itself is constructed mostly of wooden ramps, foundations, and these triangle foundation pieces. Then lined all the way around by small shrubs, wooden fences, stone displays with planters and a topiary mixed in. We're really trying to gardenize the raceway. It's more fun and colorful. Plus, this was a small one compared to previous tracks, which were all recovered from that ancient game save. So even while I lost a couple of builds on one save, I uh, got back more by reloading a world save that previously was acting bugged. So it's not all sad. I can zoom around some of the other variations of twists and turns I painstakingly lined with all those stone displays. I even got back the really tiny track that's on the cruise ship parked outside of mini San Francisco. Maybe you can tell, I get bored a lot and it ends up in many random projects on Garden Paws. If you're looking for other creative ideas for the game, please stop by the playlist and it will always be getting some updates. Perhaps even a Tree Town 3.0 to replace the original because the boredom will eventually set in. So back to building, take care y'all and bye bye